Hi there everybody my name is Ali and today I will be going to do Naham store from Try Hack Me and I will be doing some more recon today and this will be recon part 2 and the things I will cover today will be Google Docking, GitHub Docking, Burp Suite and Map Mag which is a tool from Tom Nom Nom and an extension called Vaporizer. So that being said let's jump in. I already have started my machine and my IP address is 1010.228.235 so first of all I will start off with Google Docking so what Google Docking is that we go to Google and we try to search for different sort of keyword, keywords or special type of search is so I will go to google.com and right here in this case I will try to go for nahamstore.com but right now it will not work but that's fine I will show you some different sort of docs and you can use any sort of website you want you can target Google, Facebook, Yahoo or any bug bounty program you found on Hacker One. so first thing first what I like to do is I like to go for the site so I will do site and then I will specify the site name so let's say in this case we do Naham Store like this one and then what i like to do is i like to first of all find different sort of files with the extensions of php asp aspx javascript or jsps like these so what i will do is i will do say extensions of let's say php so if i hit enter now in this case i might not get anything right away because nam store might not exist but right here you can specify any website you want or you can do anything so you can go for php extensions then php is not there you can go for asp asp is also not there you can change this and do aspx and aspx is also not there so then you can do like let's say a javascript so javascript and it is also not there so we can go for jsp and jsp is also not right here so the next talk which i will be going to do will be extension of jsp hit enter and it doesn't give me anything right here now so this was the first talk which i always like to do is the extension then i will do like site naham store or we can also do nahamstore.com that fine whatever works is absolutely fine then i will go for another doc which is in url so what it will do is it will find for some keywords in url i will do a colon and then in single quotation or double quotation i will go for let's say image underscore url so i will going be looking for some sort of urls it is not here right now that's fine you can specify any site and hopefully you find some sort of urls you can go for server side request forgery you can go for open redirect and different sort of vulnerabilities then i will go for let's say remote underscore url because this is also available on the a lot of websites then it is not here right now and that's fine let's go for let's say source underscore url and this one is also not here so then i also we can what we can do is we can try to find out different endpoints as well so what i will do is i will try to say like slash admin slash in url and wherever it will find this thing in url it will show you that endpoint so admin endpoints then i will go for let's say api endpoint so i will go for slash api slash hit enter and API endpoints are also not present so the reason why I am not getting anything right here is because of the site I will not be going to show you on any live website like Google Facebook or any other one but you can try any site right here and then you can use these dogs to find different hidden endpoints and then I also like to do another dog which is called in title and the reason why I use in title is because I can also find out some sort of index pages so I will do in title single quotation and then I do always index off and I hit enter now why index off because sometimes the index of pages might contain some sort of password file some sort of username file some sort of database file so that's why finding these sort of index pages are also very important and the last doc which I would show you right now is which is the important one as well is file type so you can find out different sort of file types like 
like pdf or document or you can also try to find out different sort of log files so i will do file type and then colon in and i will do like log because sometimes log files might be there or some other ones or i can also go for pdf and some other stuff so pdf and right now nothing it shows up so that's fine this was how we do google docking this is a very simple google search but in a mm, organized way that we specify site then we specify what sort of file type or what sort of in title or in url or extension and we try to find out some potential stuff regarding our target so this was how we do google docking and the second one is github docking and why github docking is that let me first of all go to github and let's click on this one and right here i have created a test account because for github docking you need to log in you need to sign up and you need to log in because github docking will help you a lot in this case so what what i can do right here is again i can go here and i can search for naham store like this and i can use namstore.com as well or namstore whatever works for you and then i will go for different sort of docking as well so for the first thing which i like to do is file name so file name and then i will specify a colon and then i'll say let's say vim underscore settings dot xml so this will be vim settings file so xml hit enter and let's see if i get anything and nothing because of the this again namstore.com you can specify any other stuff that you want i will be not going to show that one but then after file name vim underscore settings you might find vim underscore settings file where you might find some password or you never know whatever you can find then after that we can also specify a manifest.xml file like this hit enter nothing happens that's fine then i can also go for let's say database file so i will simply do database and we can specify any docs as well we can specify config.php mm. so config dot php mm, and nothing happens then i also if the wordpress is running so i can do wp dash config dot php which is containing the credentials for the database and this is how actually it goes on so we specify the site name and then we use different sort of docs to make our works much more easier and all of these should be manually i would highly recommend you that you should do everything manually because manual things are much more 100 percent guaranteed that you will find authentic things but if you are using some tools that will be having a lot of false positives so that's why i would highly recommend you that you should use um, manual techniques then you can specify site name and then you can specify like aws underscore access underscore key underscore id like this one so sometimes aws keys might be there right here you can see amazon web services uh, is here but nothing aws underscore access key that's fine then we can use like let's say we can also specify different sort of languages so language like php so language and i will do a colon again and i will say that php so some things might be there in php we can also see the code we can also see the repositories always always look in every place sometimes you find a lot of hidden credentials and a lot of things so you can specify as well username you can specify right here password you can specify anything you want and i have seen a lot of times that some keys are seen here some username some credentials some admin panel credentials and a lot of things are being shown here so you need to, you need to specify the site name and then you need to do these sort of dockings and then you will see some potential stuff so this was about google docking and github docking and the very next thing which i want to show you is a tool or a framework called burp suite so let me start my burp suite right real quick
and the reason why i would highly recommend you that you should log everything behind in the burp suite is because there are a lot of things a lot of requests which are being made and you don't know what those requests are made so that's why always always use burp suite in the background and i will show you how to do that one now if i come back here to my terminal from my previous video we were able to see a lot of alive subdomains so if i cut out my alive subdomains last time we were able to see all of these so stock.naham store marketing.naham store www.naham store shop and this one so let's say let's pick any ran random one so let's pick this second one i'll go to google or i'll go to my browser i'll paste it in here and let's see what happens so while my burp suite is on i will go in here proxy and the very first thing which i like to do is turn my intercept off and i will go to my target and i will add a scope now i always use this advanced scope control and i will let you know why so i will check this one i will come back to my a live subdomains and i can see that right here i am having the keyword of naham store in every subdomain so naham store is here naham store is here in every subdomain i can see naham store so what i will do is i'll come here and i'll click on add and i will say in host or ip range i will simply add naham store and whatever naham store wherever naham store comes in onto my firefox it will my burp suite will record it so if i click on ok and if i click on yes okay my now scope has been added if i come back here to my sitemap i will click on re-enable and in my proxy http history i will come back here i will click on this one and i will click on show only in scope items and i will let you know what it will do so if i come back to my browser the site is still loading that's fine let me see if i have added this ip to my host file because last time i was having some uh, other ip so i will sublime hc hosts so i will remove this ip paste the new one this is both of these are same let me see if i can ping the machine so ping yes i can so let's see get a live subdomains let's copy this one again paste hit enter okay it is working now so if i now turn my firefox or foxy proxy on turn on my burp suite and if i refresh the page and if i come back to my burp suite you can see my request has been recorded here if i click on this request i am having the complete request get request is being made host header and this is user agent accept and all of the things so i can also see the response as well which is 200 okay what i can do is i can send this request to repeater i can go to repeater click on send and i can see the response here as well now one more very very interesting and very very important thing is that i can also click on render here as well but before clicking on render what we need to do is we need to go to user options display and turn on this html rendering function and the other one is in project options and i believe it is in miscellaneous if i scroll at the bottom yes embedded browser so click on this one as well so both of these options should be made check and if i come back to repeater click on send and if i click on render here sometimes this gives you error and sometimes it works so in this case it is working and you can see i can render the response of the website right into my burp suite as well this is very very handy so what i can do is now whatever i will do here is i will be being recorded recorded in my burp suite so if i click on this link and this link let's say what happens if i come back here now you can see this when i click though that link that link got recorded here as well and still the website is not getting loaded but that's fine i have the link recorded right here this is a get request and the request is being made to this ip address and a lot of things can be done so let's close this one let's see some other domains let's see this one paste hit enter and it is taking time but everything is being recorded here into my burp suite so you can see this one and this is being recorded we can send this request to repeater we can do whatever i want send 
and i don't know why it is taking time might be my vpn connection but in this way burp suite records everything and the render functionality of burp suite is extremely amazing so you can see this this domain is now forbidden so now if i come back to my burp suite you can see forbidden i can see the render functionality as well and it is forbidden as well so let's see some other domains into our burp suite we can do a lot of things there are some extensions as well and i am right now using community edition what you can do is you can add some like from extender you can come here you can go to b app store and you can install a lot of extensions these and this will help you a lot in your bug bounty journey then after burp suite and the intruder tab is also very important because you need to do a lot of brute forcing and there is one more extension which is in extender b app store which is called turbo intruder which is extremely extremely fast so that's why you can use that one as well let me see where it is so turbo intruder write this one and this is extremely fast and it is free as well so i would highly recommend you that you should look into this one as well so after burp suite there is there are few things which you, you can do now i am having so i'm having some domains right here so what you can do is you can start off with the nmap so you can do port scanning as well so let's do port scanning on any one of these random so i will copy this one and i will simply do nmap dash a for aggressive scan dash v for verbosity and then this domain i believe i don't need to add http right here or let's see hit enter because sometimes it is possible that you are having some more ports open so right now i didn't get anything let's do nahamstore.thm let's see if we get anything nothing right here so what i can do is so let me see my host file it is absolutely fine if i ping this ip 10.10.228 235 okay so i can communicate with my machine now so what i will do is i will again start off with the nmap scan and let's see what happens because nmap is extremely important port scanning is extremely important so we should always do port scanning and right here you can see port 22 is open port 80 is open and port 8000 is also open so that was very very important because you can miss these sort of things and port 8000 might be having some web server as well so let's see what is on port 8000 so if i copy this from here if i come to my browser and if i paste this here and do port 8000 hit enter and right here i am having a blank page but there is something which is existing so that's why port scanning is extremely extremely important you should know what sort of ports are running port 22 is also open you can try to log in with ssh try to do a brute force tag sometimes you might get a hit or sometimes doesn't but that's absolutely fine so that's why nmap is extremely extremely important as well so after nmap i will show you one more tool which is called meg and it is extremely extremely important as well because sometimes when you are doing brute forcing against one server it makes it possible that you might get blocked out because you made a lot of requests so that's why what a mac does is mac will like send one request to a lot of servers per second so this can help you a lot so again i have already have downloaded mac from github which is from tom nom nom repository but um, i will not show you how to install that one you can simply install it that's quite easy let's see how to use this one so first of all i will do mac dash h for help and what we need to specify is we need to specify the path of the file and then the host file and we can specify the output directory by default it is out out so then we can say that we let's say we need to find how many subdomains are there which are having robots.txt file available so we can simply use meg and we can figure that out that out of 1000 subdomains there are 
400 subdomains which are having robots.txt so in this case it helps a lot so let's see how to use this one so i will simply do mag and then i would like to use dash dash verbose flag because i like verbosity and then after that i will do a word list so right now in this case i will use a very small word list which will be let's say user share derb and the word list afterwards will be word list and small.txt so it will be very small word list and then i will specify this against my alive subdomains which i was able to found so if i hit enter now let's see what happens and right away you can see that i am having some response back and i am having 404 not found 403 forbidden then i am having 301 and let me control c right here and let me see what is the output so if i do ls the output will be in out folder so if i go to out and if i do ls again you can see i am having the responses for every subdomain as well so let's navigate into marketing one so cd into marketing ls and there are some few files so if i cat out any one of these random ones so if i cat this out i can see the complete request and the complete response as well so this is the request which is a get request slash zero zero and i can see the headers as well if the headers are engine x i can see the response and since it is 404 not found but that's fine still i can see a lot of things there are some hrefs there are some potential things right here as well so in this way meg helps a lot but there are some options as well in meg that we can specify like we can specify let me come one step backwards yes so if i remove that my out directory and if i use meg again this one i can also specify dash s for status code and i can also specify that which status code i want so let's say i want 301 only and if i hit enter now so i will only see 301 request so this makes it a lot a lot handy to see that which subdomains are having these files or not so in this case it helps a lot so we can also just get out of that blocking part of things because if we send a lot of requests against one server mm, chances are that we might get blocked out so in this case it helps a lot and finally one last thing which is a firefox extension which is called vaporizer so for example right here let me turn my burp suite off i have loaded this page right here and right here there is a vaporizer extension so if i click on this one this will tell you a lot of things as well so you can see i am having an operating system i am having my web server which is nginx 1.14.0 i can see this version whether this is vulnerable to any version or not so i can do a lot of things against this one i am also seeing the reverse proxy as well bootstrap is also running let me over over to another one let me see this one on port 8000 nothing is there that's fine let's see what other domains which we were having stock so if i do stock and if i paste this right here let's see what comes up and let me open and this one as well So now you can see that this one is here and again vaporizer is coming back to me and it says engine x and operating system is ubuntu and reverse proxy is in you so in this case we can do a lot of enumeration a lot of enumeration we can use burp suite we can use a lot of things google docking github docking mag and some extensions like vaporizer and we can do a lot of recon and hopefully this was it for this video and i try to show you everything as i can and hopefully this was it for this video so i will see you in the next video take care bye